we arrived! Woohoo! Are you psyched? I'm psyched. <laughs> There's a Model A right there. That's a cutie patootie. Model T here at Mitchell Manufacturing. We're gonna go inside because Rody's getting a synchronized transmission and I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see what Steve shows me. We're gonna find out together. Let's go. Just here. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! Yeah. laughs> we need to do this one. What's this? We need to install a real deal seal in the transmission. Yeah? Because this is a very, very useful part. A gentleman up there, he makes these. And what does it and, do? Uh, well, I'll show you what it does. Nice. That's an easier thing to do. Okay. We actually include it as a part of every Model A installation. <laughs> it is actually built. Every single Model A out there will leak oil when you push the shift rail into the belt housing. When you oh. shift into first gear, the shift rail goes in. It's an actual display so people can see it. The shift rail actually goes through an open hole into the belt housing. Hmm. And our seal goes in, the shift rail then, the rail goes into it, it returns the oil back into the transmission. Hmm. Because this was an easy one. This is a 100% guaranteed leak. If, if, now there is one if to it. Yeah. You have to have oil in your transmission. Oh. <laughs> if your transmission is low at the bottom and you don't have any oil, you don't have any to leak out. True. Yeah. But if it has oil, it's leaking every single time. And then, because all the Model A parts were built by hand, uh, the holes are oversized, which mm. is common for Model A's. Yeah. Uh, they are, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a 9 16 hole and a 551 or 555 rail. Uh, so there's seven or eight thousandths, probably ten thousandths around the rail hole that in layman's terms is about three pieces of newspaper. Hmm. If they talk thousands to you, a piece of newspaper is about three thousands. So that's that's how you can kind of correlate it. I'm telling you numbers, but yeah. you know what three pages of newspaper are. Yeah. Okay, well they already have that much slack. So on the other hand, if you're going downhill and you have oil, the oil runs up there and it'll just run out. And that's part of the oil that runs out of the bottom of the bell house. And with our seal in where it does not leak, then if you have a leak on the ground at the bottom of the bell housing, then you truly have a rear engine mainsail leak. Wow. But most of these aren't rear engine mainsail leaks. They're actually transmission hull leaks. And uh, this, we include this in the transmission kit. So there's actually one in with your transmission. Hey. The reason, the biggest reason we do that is our a uh, synchronized transmission will actually leak faster than a normal Molly because we run a uh, we recommend an 85 slash 140 weight oil which is the equivalent of a 90 weight but that oil will pour out of the can now the original oil they recommend for the Model A transmissions and rear ends it's a 600 weight mm -hmm. and it won't hardly pour out unless you heat it up wow. so the only difference is ours will leak faster the other part that I believe people are really missing nowadays that they don't think about, these, these, the Model A transmissions in general are leaking way more now than what they originally did when they were originally built. Yeah. But to me, the difference is originally they could go drive them on graded, graded dirt or gravel roads with the potholes and maybe 25, 30 miles an hour might have been an absolute maximum road speed wow. in 1930. Yeah. And now you're taking these same cars and driving them 40, 45, 50 miles an hour. And I really believe the oil level is too full in the, uh, in the transmissions for today's driving habits. Hmm. So what's actually happening, and that's part of the real deal. It's part of, it's part of uh, three different reasons on them uh, that they actually leak more oil because you were just blowing oil everywhere at twice the inner speed that you originally ran. Hmm. So that, that is the difference on them. And uh, there's leaks more. And then our oil is thinner, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to leak out faster. Yeah. That's why we provide these in the, these in the holes. Nice. That these for the, for the front. What Paul needs to do that's going to really be, really be an asset to everybody, and it's the reason we built this, is you can actually 
you can actually uh, install these without taking the transmission out. Oh, that's It's by nice. far easier to do it when you're removing the transmission because as I showed, you just simply go in here and you can just go at it. Yeah. These are the two main top holes of the transmission that, that bolt it down. Much simpler here, but it can be put in with the car uh, without taking everything apart. Mm -hmm. You can simply go through the inspection hole mm -hmm. and you can go down in and these two bosses show you where the bolts are. Yeah. And you can actually pull those bolts out wow. from the inside. <laughs> put our seal in, go back and put the new bolt in. Jeez. And it can be done. It is a, oh, a one to two hour uh, install. Yeah. There's nothing about it that's hard, it's just time consuming mm -hmm. because you're in here and you can get about one flat on the bolt because you can't <laughs> hardly get your wrench on it yeah. and it's just a matter of going through this. But but they can be put in, very, very useful seal. Yeah. Uh, has, nobody's written anything up, we've told them nobody's written anything up about doing that. Now there's the other two seals that go along with this that we also utilize. We also on the two main rear shafts we also uh, we put O-rings on the seal on the shafts and re-ream the re-ream the shafts because Henry Ford never he just drilled and reamed the hole for the for the reverse idler shaft and the main shaft. Hmm. And uh, so we actually step up and put uh, put shafts in with an O-ring. They they should seal. They're not going to seal everywhere. Because there's some there's some problems in these cases, and I can show Paula. We can take a picture of it. There's about 25, maybe as high as a third, somewhere between between a quarter and a third of these actual cases that have a bad spot on the bottom. I will find you one out of our pile and, and show you. The O rings won't seal. Oh wow! There's like pits in the case where when they poured the case, it was a gas bubble, air bubble. Uh, it was actually a flaw in the case, but the case is three quarters of an inch wide here. It's not affecting the strength of it, but it is affecting the sealing. And anything we suspect that aren't going to seal, we put on what they call a rear shaft seal. And uh, this would be a good little project to show people to, to do also. Because, because Henry Ford used no seals yeah. and no O-rings, mm -hmm. 80 to 90 percent of the cars are going to leak yeah. out the back. All you're really doing is stopping a leak, but it's still pretty nice on a Model A uh, mm. to stop that leak because otherwise it's going to run on the floor. Now these you can actually put on underneath on the outside without uh, disassembling anything. Mm. Uh, so that's a, that's a way there. The ones you can go buy in ours, the only difference is ours are prettier. Yeah. On the bottom line. The inside of the ones you can buy in ours are both designed the same. Ours, instead of looking like a ground piece, you went and ground on the uh, the, uh, the uh, grinder in your shop by yourself. Ours are nicely finished, rounded, uh, nice corners. We Engine we color. want to use them. We want to be as proud of that seal as we are with the rest of the work that we do. Yeah. And uh, do they cost more to make fancier ones? Yes. And you got to go for the thing. I'm guessing the rest of everything is probably made overseas. Ours is probably the only U.S. made one. Our seals are U.S. made. Our products are U.S. made. Yeah. Everything we build goes out with a made in U.S. sticker. Because yeah. we're believers. And yeah. I try to buy U.S. bolts where I can. Occasionally you get to a situation where you can't. Usually it's a time span. Yeah. Uh, Why well you can't. Uh, but uh, that's, that's a seal that's included with the gaskets. Mm -hmm. Very necessary. Uh, we had no idea when we first started, and neither did anybody else, that transmissions would actually leak that bad. Mm. Nobody, nobody paid attention. Now there was a couple write-ups, and I, I maybe Paul's looked back and found them, like in the restore or some items. Uh, they used some like copper pipe weld-on end plugs or something. There's some people that turned some of them down and just pushed them in the hole. So it would return the oil. They knew they were leaking. Nobody thought they leaked that much. Mm. And it's actually significant. Way more than, uh, you can stop leaks on the bottom. I really try to PR them for somebody, for example, that's like it's putting in new engines. 
if they're telling me they're putting in and we're getting to seal out of the bird's engines, uh, you put in your bird's engine, you need a seal on your transmission. Because when that oil runs out on the ground, mm. out of the bottom of your bell housing, is that your transmission or is that your engine? Yeah. You don't know. The transmission oil is a little heavier, but it's still hard to tell the difference on it because she definitely had a leak. So good little product. The best customer of these through the years is actually Miss Snyder's. Wow. Uh, Snyder's, they've, they've slowed down a little bit, but they religiously, uh, from the time they found out that we built them, every six to eight weeks, would purchase 50 of these and 25 of our easy checks. Wow. And this has went on for like eight or 10 years. Now they buy 25s and 10s. And uh, now uh, the last puller kit was really interesting because Snyder's also buys our, our breakup pullers and our pinion pullers and keeps all of them in stock. Uh, before the last publication or before you previewed the rear breakup puller the, the last time, we had sent Snyder's their normal can. They, when they get down to two or three, they must order cans is their set. The week before Paul's video came out, and then Tuesday morning, <laughs> they called up and bought another 25. Oh. So there must have been some pretty good action went on there also yeah. uh, on, on the, uh, the, uh, the breakup puller. Yeah. Uh, the breakup puller, great tool. I try to recommend it actually as a club tool. Uh, breakup puller, pinion puller, you're not going to use them very often. Somebody in the club is going to need them. I still got to build the tower. I have it, I have it basically built and I, and I took it apart. Oh, uh, but I'm pretty good. At, I don't know if you watched that video, but I'm pretty good at doing towers. Yeah. That was really no kidding. Mm. That video is still selling. It, it's it's kind of it's been different than I expected. It. I expected that video to sell a lot more parts than what it what it did. Mm. Now, what it sold uh, the most weeks I average. Uh, uh, two full-size towers that I send out, <laughs> complete. My people would rather buy, uh, and maybe the maybe the sticks scare them, maybe the putting them together scares them, uh, maybe just the work of going through it. But uh, I'm sending finished Molly towers with my mountain detents, uh, reproduction sticks, and. Uh, I've sold a, little, a lot more of them. I've gone in for two a week. The fun part is, we've really got to help some people with it. Yep. And uh, Lake County guy can't shift his car because there's something wrong in the shift, which is probably wear on the stick or wear in the forks or wear somewhere. But regardless, he couldn't drive his car. Selling him sell a complete tower. He didn't want to talk about parts. If he can have a complete tower, he can unbolt that one, bolt this in. And he did literally that afternoon drive away. Yep. <laughs> And called me up wow. and said, this is really fun. I got to drive my car. Oh, my gosh. And but that even was the only thing stopping him? Yeah. Wow. Well, it was, it was broken to some extent. Jeez. I mean, it wouldn't shift or, or go in gear properly. And, hmm. and uh, the, uh, but that surprised me back just to sell that many. I, I ask if they want it, hmm. you know, but I'm more than willing just to sell them parts because it's different. Probably the only couple things... And, and undoubtedly, you know, we don't really do, we're just really taking it back to standard. Except, I've had really good luck shimming the detents. Yeah. And there's nobody else in the whole industry that I know of that shims the detents on. And all that does meaning is it puts more pressure on the spring. It, makes it, mm. nice and snappy, it holds it mm. more in place. So before I put you around, we were going to personalize your tower a little bit. Yeah. I didn't want to, uh, my father and I, of course, he had 30 years on me. We always fought about that. I always tried to make the tower shoe tight, and he always wanted me to make them looser. Yeah. But he was 30 years older. He said, you're younger and stronger. I said, but I think they ought to be that way. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, you, I win all the arguments now. But I went a little mm -hmm. tougher. But you might be sending out a tower for a 85-year-old uh, wife that's driving her 90-year-old husband, and they're still getting to go enjoy their car. I got another new toy that, that I was interested for Paul to look at and I was wanting mm -hmm. to put in it. And uh, I actually sh uh, put a spacer on both sides. I'll show you of the second gear and third gear. Hmm. 
okay? Now, the reason I did that, on the East Coast, they have some deals called gentleman races hmm. in the divisions. They got a Model A division. Nice. And the one gentleman guy, the reason he got me is I already sent him three sets of transmission gears because he's breaking them. Mostly second gear, the shift from first to second. And they got them cars running like 89 miles an hour. <laughs> hey, but it, apparently wow. it's a big enough deal that they want to buy transmissions. And they, they want to try to win. Man. Well, I didn't like the fact that you could get a little bit of overshift in them. In, in any of these, even the standard Model A, we can take it and play with it, and you can still get. When this is, uh, let's see, that's all the way in gear. You've still got like a quarter of an inch overshift that you could go if you wanted to pull on. It. You hmm. could pull out past the detent. Well, I shimmed it on both ends. Hmm. So, and apparently, now my race cars, I didn't take any warranty. I'll tell you, I want no. You get no warranty. Yeah. But what I wanted was them to be able to slam it in gear. It can only take it five thousandths past second gear and five thousandths past third. As I say, you can even look. <laughs> this is this is in the this is in the high gear, and it's or that's actually in second gear, and it's got a quarter inch more it could go. Well, hmm. mine can only go five thousandths, or say two pieces of newspaper. That's as far past. So you can hit it, you can bend the stick, but the tower can't go any further. It can't overshift itself. That's what I was concerned so much about with the race car. Mm. Because that's how he's already breaking transmissions. He's shifting wow. from first to second. And because now they're not breaking ours because our second and third is the two gears with the synchronizer. Hmm. He's breaking it on the standard Model A because you're sliding the gear off first and sliding the gear on second and when you're getting it on second if you let the clutch out you're on the corner and it's breaking the corner of the gear off. what do we got here oh yeah this is the baby all put together now we did put a uh oh you got the, the rear this. shaft seal yeah the seal there i see it now, these are the other available ones snyder's bratton's uh some of them they grind out hmm. but as i say the inside <laughs> of them is basically the same yeah they're, they're gonna do the same thing they're just not as pretty as yours we just <laughs> uh, that's my feelings if we think a case might leak we just put them on yeah. why deal with that later mm -hmm. now you've got your uh you've got your you've got your seal hmm. for the for the front you've got your gasket for the top front and the universal joints and you've also, somewhere here, we should have in here. Oh, in this baggie, uh, we send two of the bolts. You've got the other four bolts to complete that situation and a different universal joint washer. Hmm. The, uh, and then everything everything checked off. But we got to, uh, I, I wanted to see if, if uh, you'd, you guys would you know take the chance to run my deal I, there's nothing that can go bad i don't i can't figure a way that for it to be bad but i need some more test stuff out there hmm. you know why why you can't do better than already you got a tester yeah you know or a tester husband <laughs> yeah. did testing i show you. you where those cases could be bad why they leak did i ever show you that one oh I'll show you. i mean it's just a it's just a, a point but but uh that's why the deals won't, some of them won't seal. Usually if we're lucky, we'll find one out of four. The reason we never found it is you're looking at that hole right there. We scored. Number one, first time. Can you see that? that I can see the groove. Is, is it a, a groove uh, or a hole? No, they're taking it over in the light. Or I'll take it over. It's a hole. Right. It's actually holes. Is See that hole right there? You want it on, on the, the table side? Or? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I just kind of threw that at you. I apologize. No, it's fine. This is, this is a standard that's smooth, and there's no, but we didn't find it until you tip the case clear over. Yeah. That's the only place to find it. Wow. Now, an O-ring is not going to seal on that one with the bubbles. Wow. So before we put cases together, we just simply flip them over. If they look like this and they don't have any bubbles, then we put them together. 
Is it always in that same spot? Always. Wow. Yep. So that's why I say something, something that the position of that casting. Sure. I need a test guy if you're if if you guys want to do it. It would be even better because she's a novice. She so. can just slam dunk it. No, yeah. I'm serious. That's yeah. what I thought about her. <laughs> now what we're doing on the ship rail is just I've just got little little shims on both sides. Yeah. Okay, when we put it in, so when that goes back, the uh, one's going to go on each side of the deck. You've got a front and a rear. Okay. And they go in that position. So when it shifts back, that hits. When it shifts forward, that hits. Okay. And that's what I did to prevent the race car guy from being able to shift too far. Okay, though that's because I was you're afraid in in the speed shift, second to third, he was going to ruin stuff. Uh, I, I, and and I still justifiably believe that, that he might, you know, if you didn't have it. Yeah. And and I've run that, and he's had no problem with it. But I want to run a couple more, and I'm really thinking about honestly, almost if you think about it, it really would be good for anybody. Mm -hmm. Just jam it in gear. Uh, you can't mm -hmm. overshift it. It's protecting. It's making their shifting better, and it's protecting the. Uh, the rest of the transmission now these are just little plastic uh snap-ons uh we've used them for 40 years they're standard for the transmission the great part about them where the model a uh, forks are just metal to metal is you've got two unlike materials and, and these stay very slick and mm. i've never seen a pair of more than that in 40 years yet oh wow they, they, they'll have some you can see the wear on them but i've never seen a pair worn a little bit of grease <laughs> we have run into the issue with that uh, with uh, this is that Luber Plate 105 motor assembly grease that's what we use a lot of but if you will let it sit around 5 to 10 years it kind of almost separates oh wow now it's still petroleum so it still lubricates but we've had it, we've, uh, we found it with uh, overdrive somebody bought that uh, uh, had never been run, still sitting there in the box. And it had been 10 years and the gentleman, I guess, had passed away and his kids were selling and stuff. And unfortunate kind of thing, it wouldn't even turn. We had enough of the bearings, they just locked it in. Now we pulled it apart and some uh, uh, lacquer thinner cut it and it was good. Everything was fine. Anything like that now, when I get people that have it, I just recommend that they put the overdrive in one gear. Whether it's high or low, doesn't matter. Just put it in one. Put brand new oil. Just go drive it five miles. Make it hot. Don't shift it. Just let let it wash everything right in that position. Come back. Drain that drain that quart of oil out. Put another quart of oil in. Put it in the opposite gear. Go give it a three or four miles. Then you come back, drain that. Now you go do anything you want. That's a good idea. Hmm. And I haven't had an issue with any of those being a problem. Good tip. Well, wow. we just get them in gear. But, but they, that stuff will really get tough. That's it gets tough. real yellow and yucky colored. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I didn't know it did that bad. This is my, my two spacer for the scanner that I usually put in. Where you guys live, I don't think that's real hilly. Uh, if if uh, it's just a matter of adding shims to get to the mountain detents, I just add more shims in the, in the detent itself. So if you'd like to, or we could we could put we can make it really tough. You could take mm -hmm. some out. We could start here. You could take some out, or or put some in if the situation ever came. But I do make both of them. And and the hillier situation is better in first gear on the if it has more more pressure. The uh, but uh, oh, I messed up. I didn't put the I didn't put my pieces in. You're right. Rat row. Yep. Hey, that's okay. We're too busy we jibber jabbering. Yeah, there's too much talking <laughs> and not enough working. <laughs> yeah. The. Uh, I get some pretty nice comments about. Now to put these little deals in, or if you want to take them out, you don't have to pull the, you don't have to pull the rail anyway. Right. It's just gonna come from right there. Mm 
That's our front guy. Oh, damn it. Went too far. Okay, now before I paint it, we'll just go ahead and shift it, but that comes back and hits on the back, just goes ahead and hits on the front. Wow. But it doesn't matter how hard you make it go, it can't go past that. That's awesome. And if it's on the rail, all it can move with the rail, I haven't figured out what it can hurt. Nothing. I worried about the front one because there's the grooves, but I can't get it to tip. I can't get any tip in this uh, where where you got the detents. I haven't had it haven't had it in there. That would be my only only comment. I think if it ever did, you could probably go back and reshift it, and it would straighten itself out. But I don't see that it's going to change. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess cool. that's asking for a second opinion. Sure. But but honestly, mm -hmm. this method. Uh, work good for anybody I mean that would work good for anybody because you don't have to worry about how how soft you can go and otherwise it would overshift that far mm -hmm. yeah so when you want to drill second gear you can just drill second gear because <laughs> it's going to touch in the in the case yeah the, uh, the uh, so and should have about five thousand points in it on each end a little bit of override yeah. I'll put it, I'll nail it together. Well, tip it up, up and she can shift it on top and see. Uh, I've still had good luck for 25 years using those instead of the other ones. I don't know how you get the other ones in. Uh, there. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to take this and flip it up and make it so she can actually shift it. Uh, but that, that's my idea, but what do you think of those? Brilliant. Uh, seems really it works cool. works on the race car. It's I'm really, really tempted to just use it on everybody. <laughs> I, I mean, seriously, <laughs> just because that you don't have to, you can't make it go past there and you don't even have to be nice. Yeah. I mean, when you shift, it just goes to there. Paul's like, just slide it in. Don't shift so fast. <laughs> so maybe this will help me. <laughs> uh, hey, I shift as fast as you can shift. I mean, absolutely. But she's going to drive her car like she knows how to fix it, and she's going to get in mine and break it. <laughs> I'm going to stay no. out of that. No. Uh-oh. I'm going to stay out of that. <laughs> but, uh, we actually built this for my mother. Yeah. My mother, when uh, my father had a light stroke like 10 years before he passed, mm -hmm. and before then, he drove everywhere. But he grew up with a Model A's. There was, it, it probably like your dad. They tell the neat stories, them and their buddies, you know, ah, this one died, we broke it, or ran it into something. And we went we went down to the neighbors and we paid twenty dollars for one and we took part of those parts off. We made ours run. <laughs> so we had a car again. Like there was a group of like three of them or something. <laughs> and and uh, but the whole Model A and time, mom and dad, uh, dad just drove because he liked it and mom was happy just to go. But now when he had a stroke, she had to drive. Hmm. If they were going to go, he had about 30 miles in him was about all he he had total. Wow. And uh, Sonoma County Club, it took 30 miles to get to where everybody broke off to go anywhere. So, yeah. Hmm. Well, just to balance on that a little bit. Yeah. Yep, I'm gonna put these holes in here when I get there. Oh no, that one's absolutely 
I can't wait to start driving roadie all the time. That's gonna be amazing. Mom, Mom drove till uh, like they drove this. Now, now we got a really nice uh, uh, 29 four door, uh, with or without whichever way you want to say. Uh, we might be taping, so I won't say mm -hmm. where the engine came from. But we've had good luck with it, <laughs> and some of them haven't had. I don't even. I don't know what you do, but I don't even recommend engine builders. I don't want. I have no opinion. I mean, I, and that's all I'll tell them. I have no opinion. Uh, that's that's how it's going to shift now. What what you're going to have to, and Paul will probably remind you, but you'll, it'll be a learning thing. Yeah. The normal Model A transmission shifts 10 inches. Wow. From the seat, from the dash to the seat. Ours shifts five inches in in first in in uh, first and reverse. It shifts five and shifts four and a half from second to third. So right there to right there is all. That's a complete <laughs> second to third shift. Wow! Shift it. You can't hurt it. I show you. I put the pieces in. <laughs> I mean seriously, if you can shift it like that, it doesn't matter. It's just the same pattern. They're going in reverse. Wow. But we only have a... You can really feel that it's in gear. Well, that's There's no my, guessing. That's that's my detents. Yeah. But but I'm still kind of a fan of uh, of my little pieces. So you're in gear. That's all. That's as far as you can go. Yeah. <sighs> it, it's got 5,000s override. What can it hurt, Paul? <laughs> I mean, because I'm really, I'm really tempted. I got my parts in there to do that Somebody on everyone. I've had some customers; they made plugs, port, and stuff. So I, I through the 25 years, I just never took the next step on it. But I have seen some some warning signs of that, and uh, so that's it. And then, uh, if if for chance now, this is just a normal average. Uh, you can make them softer, you can make them a little stiffer. If you're really going all the hills, for the sake of first gear, they need to be shimmed a little tighter. Mm -hmm. But now see, this is on our, uh, uh, this is on our, on our video about the detent shim is you go into gear, you come back to start it into gear, and then you can take off and you can tap it. And at some point, and you can watch it or keep dabbing it at some point it will take over and snap itself into gear hmm. wow and you can hear it that's actually the detent hitting center and people can hear that on the video because they tell me that they can hear that one on the video because <laughs> we showed them that on the video because yeah. you can't but uh, i'm shipping an exceptional amount my my detents that I have made are twenty five thousand thicker than everybody's before we start. Just to start. The question I don't have an answer to. I know what springs I'm using. I don't have an answer where you'd even find it. How big the spring's supposed to be? Because I have a can full of springs, and I'll guarantee you I got better than half an inch. And they're all over the place. I got better than half an inch worth of like, longer, shorter. What's standard? I just know what we go. But uh, I know when you get the five or six shims in it, you basically are touching, the detent's touching itself in the, in the center. Let's take the imagination out of this. These are basically right at about 30,000. Uh, that's how much bigger I am than the standard that you would go buy. Okay, now when I go to the mountain detents, now the average car I shim with with two, so I'm now 30 times four, so I'm now I'm now basically let's call it an eighth of an inch bigger than the standard, and that's what I'm doing on these and the standard car. Now when I go to the mountain detents, we're like almost a three eighths of an inch. That, that's how much more pressure we're putting on 
the uh, the detent, the spring. So much more we're trying to hold it in gear. But that's why using this method, and it's nothing more than going back to standard, except for putting shims in. Everybody buys a package, but then you don't know whether the you don't know whether the detents are the right shape, if they hit correctly, or if they're not, and you don't know how big the springs are. And you buy them. So it's it's a it's quite it's a different thing. But if you're happy, I can make it softer. I can make it harder. Yeah. Or you can do it later after you play with it, <laughs> after you drive it for a while. Yeah. This is pretty. This is just standard. Yeah. It's just standard. My standard two shim. Uh, I go a little tighter. If Dad was here, he'd make me pull them out. <laughs> he'd want it softer. The. Uh, I uh, think for her, that's going to be better. I think so oh, too. And, but it, it's easily changeable. And if you wanted to pull a little pieces. You can just pull that. Uh, I'll give you a few more of those drive pins if you want. And uh, uh, the uh, you can pull that drive pin, push the rail out, but you don't have to leave the case. You just got to clear it. And uh, we'll put our little plug in. This little plug does nothing but keep dirt out of the detent. Let you load them. Hmm. <laughs> now that's the big trick on the the uh, I, I don't know everybody talks about the V8s and the 39s you're you're aware that the 39s have a detent on both sides yeah, yeah. Mm. And they're the only ones of that era wow and the three inch four <laughs> yeah, but you probably get asked those questions all the time when they're trying almost to use never. it almost never for the V8 transmission <laughs> Well, they know yeah. that I'm going to tell them no. I'm going to tell them to buy a Mitchell Synchro. Um, yeah, but hey, uh, we don't care. Sammy, Sammy loves it. He loves the V8s. Uh, well, that's what there was before you started doing Everybody it. did it before we did. That was the only option out there. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't agree or disagree. I just, hey, whatever you'd like to do. Uh, for the overdrives, we've just simply got a different shifter bracket. But otherwise, mm -hmm. that's it. That should be the correct bend on a nickel chrome. Original stick, re chrome. Nice. So we got to have all the good stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I know better than that one. In the nickel chrome. Yeah. Now, this is yours to take to the front. I'm a, Yahoo. Yeah. We still, in that, we get the comments all the time. We amaze people with blowing that stuff together. <laughs> Probably eight out of every ten talk about them snapping. Just like that little snap there. Because yeah. they won't do it. It's the easiest thing in the world, I tell people, to check your car. You can check and see how your car's hitting just by doing that same thing. Like going second gear, so you're lined up, go back to neutral, start it in, and then tap it and see when and if, it, if it'll if it go snap and pop itself in. Because mm -hmm. if it just kind of squishes in, you know you don't have very much pressure. Wow. And if it goes snap, then you know it's purposely and you can try this once you get it in the car it'll do the same thing as long as you just got the gears lined up on it the other biggest footnote is a mark down the center oh, that yeah. shows you that that's actually dragging yep. so initially the detent supposed to set on the top mm -hmm. the top two corners and then it can't move it's secured has two spots can't move when it's in the bottom it's now rocky and when you put a hole in it doesn't have to stay there because it rocks Hmm. And when there's a mark on the detent, you know it's been rolling in the bottom. Hmm. So it's actually showing you that either the detent is bad or uh, the rail is bad. Wow. And that's a little mark from that. And then you never know how the detents might be. They're typically all worn, and most of them you're looking at 90-year-old parts anyway. <laughs> you know, they're worn. But there's some of them that are just in pieces. And, uh, you know, how, how good is that kind of detent going to work? Yeah. Oh, or, Definitely or no you get a, a dome on yeah. Well, not supposed to be like that. Oh no! Oh, but geez. this is what you find in them, and it's, it's not that bad. It's just simply wear. That one needs clean. You can't see it very good, but it's just, it's just flat across there. That's how flat it is instead of a dome. Wow. It's, it's just wear factor. Ninety years. Usually, you, you've got to make sure that your rails are good, that it hits properly. Oh, we can walk you clear around and show you what else we're doing. Yeah, I don't know fun. what you want. I want interesting stuff, but we do have some gears running and uh, 
some shabs running. She'd and love to see that. The, yeah. Uh, yep, let's just Definitely. set that up there. Okay. Major loot. Ooh, what do you got there? Well, that one there's a pretty cool joint. You got any of those in your collection? No. That's an original one of, uh, this, is, this is what they built, the, the gentleman that makes them uh, with the rollers in them. This is a takeoff. This is an original. Uh, they were either, whatever they, uh, Mercury's or uh, Lincoln's or Mercury's. With the with the joints with the rollers in them. Wow. The first one that was like a forty seven joint. Uh -huh. That would replace in the moment. Bob Drake. Oh Bob. You hear about the Bob Drake joints? It's a copy of this. Okay. Mm. This just happened to be it came on a transmission. This is just an original. With the original part number. But they actually have rollers in them like an original joint. This is a cool Ooh, one. That's a big one. This was actually your double A or double B joint. Wow. And because it comes apart in its two pieces. It's got the circlips on the ends. Yeah. Wow. And uh, this was like a 32 joint. Hmm. And what's so neat about them is they come apart. So those, instead of having to pull the rear end back out on those big trucks like you have to on the double A's, wow. they can just take the U joint apart and get into the clutch and the transmission. Wow. That's but, nice. But previously, you had to roll the rear end back on them just like the car. But these are actually computerized legs. And they're bigger than average computerized legs. Uh, these are these are full full size, you might say. Wow. Uh, Thirty horsepower. Uh, they really they uh, we still do the bells. Because uh, I haven't found anybody up here with a big enough machine. Hmm. And then we just prep stuff. We got gears that go to heat treat. These are synchro trans gears that are waiting to go. These are already pointed. This was the latest thing that he figured out was up until about a month ago, we put these parts on, indexed them, and did one tooth at a time and hit the button. And you got 30 teeth on both sides. So you got about 20 minutes per side. You got 40 minutes in that part. Hmm. He does that Nate. He figured out how to put it on the index. Everyone's perfect. Everyone's good. We don't have to touch them. Wow. But we have to do something because we have no bodies. If you don't have bodies, you gotta have parts. We're trying to get parts. Uh, uh, that's actually the first in reverse slider. Mm -hmm. um, this is the bottom of our cluster. You've seen that where they go, go together. That's actually, most people show you a cluster gear with four gears. Ours is four different gears. Um, this is one, this is actually the second gear that's gonna go on there. Hmm. You've got a first gear, a second gear, and a, a reverse side of the gear. So the great part for anybody in the future, if they had any trouble, or if you had a bad second gear, even the race car guys, they just buy a new one. You just slide, take one of these, slide it on. You don't have to replace the full clusters with the full full gear. And uh, I was asked if I'd make that for the Model A. Mm -hmm. I could, but I haven't. Probably mm -hmm. won't. I don't have time to do it. These are input shafts for the synchronized transmission. Uh, these are just up here to polish so they can go to another step. Next, we put the teeth on. I'll show you where we're doing that. Wow. Uh, we grind, we polish, we work on synchro trans cases. We actually broach gears back there. Now, the broach is where you... These gears are waiting to broach. They've already been through a process we call stress relief. Oh. We get them in, we shape them, we heat them up to the temperature that they're gonna, that they're gonna heat treat at, and then you let them air cool. Hmm. So that changes the molecular structure uh, to that particular shape. So when you cut the teeth and they go back to heat treat at that same at that same temperature, they don't you don't have a lot of distortion. Wow. Very minimal distortion. So that's why we do that. Now we uh, mm -hmm. we size them, we stress relieve them, then we broach them and then we finish them over a spline where they're gonna run. And we have very little distortion. We still we still work on them. We still uh, I lap them in. Wow. Uh, everything's just parts for process a long way. We used to have bodies to work in all this. Uh, before the flu, we had nine people plus in you know, we were 11 of us there. We were down to six weeks to live free. <laughs> I mean, it was like sweet. Wow. It was sweet. After that, it just went to hell. The, uh, these are just parts waiting. The, uh, these are just cases. Uh, customer parts, front bearing retainers, 
rear bearing retainers because there's actually two of these uh, there's an early style and a late uh, and uh, we just color code them and uh, as my man just we just buy them and sandblast them and put them together <laughs> uh, those are all sleeves for the overdrive uh, that's a little cluster they're waiting to hone uh, we don't have that machine going I'm supposed to be out here making it work you got a lot of cool machines here oh yeah this does two parts that's that's it it's yeah. a German machine boy what a nice machine I can't believe the Germans lost the work it's good this machine you can set it it has no hold down uh, this is what we just did on it was to cut the gear key and that's the input shaft and synchronized transmission wow and this is actually third gear because the output shaft links to the input shaft making it go full through and that that's third gear wow. but we're actually putting them on a machine and cutting the cutting the teeth wow. that's really the heart and soul part of the synchronized transmission the input shaft. That's amazing. Because uh, we've made that much change on it. And it goes down, it dials in. This machine takes 40 minutes to cut it. But it weighs 8,000 pounds. But it goes kitchen, kitchen, kitchen. <laughs> But it'll set for three months and it'll come back and cut parts within a half of a thousand. It is that it's an unbelievable machine. I cannot believe it. And it doesn't lock down. But all these shapers, you adjust your cutter, and this locks down so that it stays in that position. It can't go past. It can still go forward and back, but it always goes to that. And you unlock, but it, the, the final size never changes. Uh, we don't heat treat in our oven. We just stress relieve. We just bring them up to temperature. This is all we do there. We got tubes started. Uh, we go up here and we're putting on synchronized flies. Oh, good. She got you doing. Now, both. Do you, do you get both or just one? Oh. Huh? Okay, that one's easy, too. Uh, we're putting the synchro spline on. On here, it goes. Uh, there's one down. These go in, lock down, and this is the spline for the synchronizer. And it's actually cutting the, cutting the spline that holds the synchronizer on. And it go, when, when we're done, that'll, that'll go on. These machines are kind of slimy. <laughs> These are actual gear lapping machines. Uh, it it uh, takes all the rough surfaces off. Uh, we run the overdrive gears. That's what these are. They come back and they run five minutes. And these these machines run with pressure across and stop and reverse themselves. And it takes all the fine little spots of lumps or bumps or anything off the top of them, and they shine. It would it would be similar to people talk about lapping in a valve. We're just simply lapping in the gear, taking that, taking little bumps off. Uh, it's nice. We use helical. We got right hand, left hand. Uh, we ran them in 100 grit valve grinding compound, and uh, every overdrive gear gets it. So that, that's pretty much not a clean job, though. <laughs> not one of the cleaner jobs in the shop. But it does a nice job of, of, of quieting the overdrive down. The synchro trans with the straight cut gears. You pretty much just got to let them wear in, uh, as bad as it sounds. I've found that if you'll go like 25% SPP in them, that, that they'll, they'll break in a little quicker and quiet them a little more. Even 25% in the overdrive. The prettiest, prettiest transmissions I've ever pulled apart with SPP mixing. Why that is, I don't know. Maybe just a little heavier. Uh, maybe the people cared more to change their oil. <laughs> actually what he's cutting right now is uh that's actually a clutch part that uh Malaya or v8 clutch 
and it, it costs us the special made hop. It's the only one of the there, there's two hobs that Henry Ford used in all his manufacturers that weren't right off the shelf. That, that, that he modified. This is actually instead of having a full fledged clutch, we just have a mini clutch. Yeah. We wouldn't get it in the machine, but this 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 hob actually cuts the wow. cuts the spine. Now that's a special made hob. Mm. It was like an eight hundred thousand dollar hob to meet that spec. Uh, but uh, we cut it, and and then next it goes down and gets the gear cut, and uh, go from there. But that would be the same hop for all the V8s or anything else. And that's a U-joint uh, spline. And it's a big, it's a big, really different. We had to have that hop made different, special too. It's actually an inch and an eighth hop uh, on a. Uh, that would be one. 1.125 these are 1.190 is what they are and it, it, it's not an off the shelf but all the gears and everything are off the shelf uh, but we'll cut that I do oh for the four speeds or five speeds I I build in some front drive shafts sometimes or do some of that these are the second gears uh, of the synchro transmission Wow. Well, we've got basically all our gears we cut off this machine. You've got to change a gear in the back of it, and then that will make you cut a helical gear. But it takes a gear change, and then it's got another transmission that runs that out into it, and it makes it cut on an angle. And that's what that does. That one reminds me of a chocolate fountain. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you set the number of teeth, you set the speed. Uh, and then we do a process you call climb shaft cut from the bottom, bottom to the top. If you cut from the top to the bottom, you'd have gravity, and the gears don't cut quite as clean cutting down because gravity can grab them. This way they've got to pull against it. They let them cut a lot smoother. And actually, believe it or not, Cindy runs most of this stuff. I run the gear machine, or that's been part of my job. She runs the other stuff. She puts everything together. Uh, she's been grinding, so she took all the ground ones that he That's the synchronized transmission output. The synchro goes on here, and uh, these are intermediates for the overdrive. These are my fun ones. Mm -hmm. And I actually had these redone. It made a lot easier, nicer part for us. Yeah. Originally, we bought the hex cap. <laughs> we put a, we put an aluminum plug in, and and uh, the reason we put the plug in was if you just went in a hole, it'd be like that, and they flop around, and we didn't want them to flop around. Mm -hmm. So what we did is just have more width to that and stiffness, and it holds it solid. Mm -hmm. So I went a little different. We kind of met with my uh, turning guys, and they're actually making this, and I don't have to put a spacer in or anything else. We just sandblast them and paint them. That's how you check the transmission fluid? Yes. Nice. I think I, I think Paul's probably got one of them hit for yours, doesn't he? We'll make sure he goes home this morning then. Really? We don't want to leave you with that. Because <laughs> yeah. that'll probably make you check your own. Yeah. Or, or you could be like my dad. That was why he built it. He said, uh, and it was kind of really quite interesting. Of course, you have a father. But that's, that's easy. I would check the oil in there in their transmission in their car every single Friday of every single week. Yeah. Every single Monday, my father would cuss me and tell me I didn't do it. Oh, no. Every single Monday. Mm. So when he built his own easy check, that was after he had a stroke. And and uh, he built it because he couldn't get up and down anymore. He could get down, but he couldn't get up. And he said, now, look at this. I can do it myself. I don't have to have you. I don't have to have you do it. And the most funny part was the, the four of the Sonoma County Club guys were going to get an engine at Grass Valley or something. Mm -hmm. So they stopped in and Dad's got to show them his new toy. This is in his car. Look yeah. at this. I built this. <laughs> you know, it's here. You know, check the oil. Fill the oil. This is a pretty good deal. And one of our club guys, and he was a character anyway, 
stand in the second row of the four of them. How come you didn't fix it? There's something wrong with that. <laughs> you have to know that. That's, uh, what's wrong? I don't know what's, what, what's wrong with that. It works. You can check it off. He says, you only built one. When are we going to have one? You didn't make any for us. <laughs> <laughs> That's when we started making them. Make both the forks, the rails. There, they are pretty special. A Mitchell box. Now, originally, he just did, he did the inside. He's been doing that for several years. And uh, he just had two, the first two machine sides. He didn't have anything finished. But now he's going back and uh, remachining the outside, doing all four sides. These are actual holes you can drill and tap it if you go to an open drive line. Uh, if you, a different configuration than the Model A. And these are for the bolts that, you, that will hold it on. But he sets up does the outside. Mm. And uh, that would be the front with the ship rail. He does here, here, and the rear. And then deburs everything. Where you can't, everything will pass the blood test. That's what we call it around here. <laughs> You know, hey, when you do burger, you can ask Bob. You can ask any of them what's the blood test. <laughs> yeah. They don't pass the blood test. You didn't do a very good job. Because oh, no. you got to test it yourself. Yeah. And, uh, but boy, it's been a nice job. Wow. As I was saying, that these mm. these little holes he drilled and tapped through, we got to go in and deburr them on the back. Mm. We got to do the big holes mm. on both ends. That's it. Yeah. We put them together. Wow. What a time saving. That's just the spline for the cluster shell. That's kind of a neat little setup where it lets you change the gears on the cluster. Mm -hmm. Then we can get our different ratios on it. They even figured out how to uh, spline these. They, they build the shift arm and they figured out on the lathe that they could spline, spline these so I don't have to run them across my machine. So you're going to get your own easy check. Oh, gotcha. So make sure you have it. But now, now the only morning part now, you may make you check the oil. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you run out of oil, he's going to say, you had a way to check it. Wow. But they're, but they're pretty simple. See, you got to. Checking the transmission oils just got a whole lot easier. Yeah. No, it yeah. did. I can't it, wait to put that did. on. And it's got a template in there. shows you where to cut the hole. <laughs> oh, those work good. Wow. Those work very good. Thank you so much, Steve. That was an awesome tour oh. and explanation of different things. You got a lot more going on here that I realize yeah, it's awesome. You know. No, we do do a lot. <laughs> we do. That's a problem. We do so much. Yeah. But what's always been the theory, if you uh, if you do your own work, you're never dependent on somebody else doing it. Yeah. So we've always just went along and built our own parts. Then we didn't have to worry about whether we got them. Yeah. And and uh, now that's what's so great. Our new guy is phenomenal. I mean, you don't. Yeah. He will have stuff literally built before before we do. And it's made in America. The, uh, I get your seal. <laughs> you get your check off list. You get your I gaskets. Think. You get your bolts. And wow. Oh, oh, we had your tower. Yeah, this one right here. Oh, okay. Yep, because that's my model. Do you want a red thing for on top of that, or does it matter? Had one on it somewhere. I don't know where it went. Uh, yeah, I'm still, I'm still curious. I mean, I'm not unhappy that I've sent a lot of towers. Uh, actually, probably better that it's a 15-minute training <laughs> session every time one of them call. I mean, it, it, it's a lot. There's more than one reason to enjoy the fully built ones. Cause that's just clean cut you don't have to go through i built the one picture uh and went in and named what every part was because my guy took his apart and didn't take any pictures he didn't have a clue <laughs> but hey i just made a nice picture of it and labeled all of it and, you know, wow uh, yeah. taking all my just goods just for the cost back